in the weeks to come, I want you to know we're going to continue to have your backs every step of the way. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. First, our first is our priority to reopen the port. This is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs. And it's the top port in America, both in importing and exporting of cars and light trucks, the number one. Simply put, the impact here has a significant impact everywhere, up and down the coast and around the country. Thousands of tons of mangled steel remain lodged in the water, blocking ships from moving in and out of the harbor. I've, just, I've directed the Coast Guard, the Navy, and the Army Corps of Engineers, who are, by the way, the finest engineers in the world, and the state officials to work together to help remove this steel as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. So far, our team has been able to clear two small channels for essential ships helping clear the wreckage. And yesterday, the Army Corps announced that by the end of April, they'll be able to open the third channel for some commercial traffic, including car carriers. And by the end of May, we'll open the full channel, the full channel. My task force on supply chain disruption has been able to been engaging with union, rail, trucking, shipping, state and local leaders to minimize the impact on our supply chains. And I'm proud to announce that the federal government will provide over $8 million in grant funds to make the infrastructure improvements at Sparrows Point as the only port unaffected by this collapse, which will allow Sparrows Point to take on more ships. And that's happening now. It will happen shortly. 